Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to test some coils. Uh, I had a friend ask me, and I also had two different emails on what way do you test a coil for spark, resistance, how can you tell if they're good? So today we're going to go ahead and show you up close how to test the coil in like four different ways. And that way you know if you're dealing with a good coil. Now do remember one thing, once they get hot, sometimes they can break down. I can't really demonstrate that because, you know, I'm doing it at the workbench, but I am going to show you four different ways of testing them. And also, if you get a chance, pop down in the description if you can make a donation, even a small one to help keep the channel going. It helps a lot. And also there's t-shirts, remember t-shirts, but I won't keep it up about that. If you can, please do. So let's get started. The first thing you will need is a multimeter, okay? This is a Craftsman one. They're not very expensive. I forget what this one costs. Uh, you'll need a multimeter, and there's a couple different ones you can purchase. So this is the one that I have on hand, all right? Something else I want to go over. Okay, so I'm going to test all these since it don't take long to do while I'm doing each step, okay? To see the variances between the different ones. However, I don't know what this is. I think this might be a GM coil. You'll see the difference in the resistance. Uh, we have a Bosch German, a Bosch German, and we have a Beirut German. This one is brand new, obviously. Okay, look at the difference. That one is shorter, and I forget what the deal is. I don't know if one came on a bus or what was up with that. Now, I am going to show you something very important about the Bosch German ones. What you see on our Beirut German one is a positive and a negative, okay? And that's normal. That's what you see on a lot of coils, uh, just like that. I think that's an old GM or Ford coil, but either way, we have our Bosch Germany coils. And what do they say? One and 15. I hope you can see that. Here, let me, maybe this one will show up better. 1 and 15. Well, that doesn't say positive or negative. What is up with that? Your 15 is your positive, and the 1 is the negative. So anytime you come across the German coil like this, at least on Volkswagen Beetles, uh, and you see the 1 and 15, always remember the lower number, 1, is negative. The positive number is 15, the higher number. Here's a little chart right here. Maybe you can uh, screen cap that and keep it on your phone, maybe to keep it handy for you. That's why I put it up. Uh, so back up the video if you have to and screen cap it. But that's what you do need to know. That's very important uh, because <laughs> you don't want to even be hooking up wires if you just bought a project and you're looking going, what the heck is 15 and one? So once again, always remember that one is the negative and 15 is the positive. Okay, let's get on it. Okay, uh, what we're going to do first here is get the multimeter set up. Okay. Everybody's is going to look a little different. Put that in. There we go. Okay. Now, before you start, you have to measure the resistance of your multimeter. Let's put a little kickstand up there. Isn't that cool? Okay. So what we're going to do first, now you have your wires hooked up. Okay. We are going to turn this to 200 ohms. All right. Now, something you need to do right here that's important. Now, you'll see this first, at least on mine. There's a number one. And a few positions over, you'll see a decimal point. Just ignore that. Okay. Now, what you want to do first is measure the resistance of the multimeter because you're going to have to deduct that off. It's not hard to do. You're going to touch these together. And we have, let it level out, 0. 0.4. Well, maybe three, maybe five. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm probably moving them. Okay, let's try again. Okay, we have 0 
Okay, I'm gonna let it clear out and I'm gonna test it once more. You're just touching them together, okay? And it is, as you can see, 0.2. All right, because you're gonna have to deduct that off, okay? So let's start first with this Beirut, the German when it's brand new. So what we're gonna do is test that next. Okay, so your ignition coil has two windings. First, what we're gonna do is test the primary on these, okay? So I am going to put the negative and the positives and we're going to watch the meter. And then we know to deduct the point two. So, Let's touch that. Oh, wait, I'm blocking you, aren't I? Okay, so let it wind down. Three, whoop, I'm moving them. 3.3, okay, so that would be 3.1 ohms, okay, because you have to deduct that too. All right, I'm just testing these real quick while I'm at it. So I don't have to start over. Okay, and we have 3.8, which would be 3.6, because you're deducting the 0.2. All right, remember, this is the primary winding. Let's check our other German one. It's our taller one. Let me get it on there. I don't want to put it on the clip, so I don't trust it. 3.1, which would be 2.9, okay? Seems a little low to me. I'm not gonna tell you the measurements. You'll have to do your research because there's a difference depending on which vehicle you're on. So this one here is probably lower. Yep, I was right. 1.5 one well, 1 minus two, 1.3. And I believe, like I said, this could be a GM or a Ford coil. So that's how you check the primary winding. Now let's go to the next What step. we are going to do next is measure the secondary winding. Okay, you're going to select 20K on your multimeter. Okay, and we're going to check the secondary winding. Okay, and let me position this so you can see it down in the center there. Come on. Okay. We are at 684 because we have to deduct point 2. Okay. Let's spin it around. Check the other post. And we are 684. Let me check the other lead again. Six, eight, four, six minus two, six, eight, four. Same. Okay, that's on the Beirut. Let's check our short Bosch. That's what we're gonna call it. We are on the one negative side. That's out of whack. What the heck? <laughs> The secondary winding is not coming up right. Make sure I'm down in there with the lead. Hmm. Let me see something here. I think the second winding is screwed up. Let me check the other Bosch. Okay, and the other one's a mess. Okay, five, five, oh, then your minus point two. Let's check the other lead. Five, five, one. Okay, so we checked the secondary winding on those. I believe that one's a stinker. Uh, this one here, I can check it, but it's not a, it's not that Volkswagen the one. It's not coming up at all. <laughs> That's kind of good this happens while I'm testing them. There it is. No, no, it's not. Maybe it is. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. 
I shouldn't even be messing with that one. Okay, so far the second winding on this is screwed up, I believe. So let's go to number three. Okay, now I've switched over to mega ohms on my multimeter. We're gonna check for a short circuit. So what we're going to do here, make sure your coil is cleaned up. This is a brand new coil. So first we're gonna check one lead. Okay, keep an eye on the meter. You're going to touch, this is hard keeping it on there. You're going to touch the body of the coil like this. Now watch your meter. Okay, there's no short. Poke your lead down inside the main where your coil wire would go on. Touch the side. No short. Okay. Spin it around. You want to do the other post. Don't put your finger on that by accident while you're doing this. And no short. Okay. So there's no short in the body of this at all with the windings. I believe I phrased it right. Let's check this one. We'll do a post here. You know what? Let me, let me clean this up a second. We need a clean spot. There we go. Nice little spot there that's shiny. Because you can't have resistance from dirt or anything. Okay, so we're touching one lead. It doesn't matter which one because you're going to be testing both. Okay. And we touch the bare spot. There's no short. Down the center hole. No short. And the other lead. Or I should say post. No short. I still didn't like the secondary test on that one. Okay, now let's check our last Bosch German one here. Oops, I'm telling you it's to clean up the spot and I didn't. Okay, let's check this to see if there's a short. And there could be. Something not right there. See how that's coming up. Whoops. <laughs> Let me do this again. Mm -mm. Something wrong there. I'm showing you how to do it. I'm not telling you what the numbers are supposed to be. But that, like this Beirut, when you checked it, was at zero, no short. Okay, one last thing we're going to do is check for spark, and you can do this right at the bench. Now, before you test for spark, one thing you're going to want to do if you have a battery that's sitting in your garage that you're using is make sure you have enough voltage coming out of it. So take out a second. Let's put our little kickstand up here. Let's turn it to 20 volts because it'll go up to 20 volts. Okay. Didn't have the switch right or something. Okay. So you have your positive and negative. Let's make sure we at least have 12 volts. Okay. We have 12.39. So we're fine. Uh, that'll work. It should be sitting at around 12.8, you know, at idle, so to speak. But that's that's fine. You just make sure you have enough voltage so you don't get a misdiagnosis on the spark, okay? All right, this isn't bad as it looks, okay? You're going to take, I, I have a smaller pair of jumper cables that I made at one point. You're going to take and hook one up to the negative side of your battery. Then you're going to hook it to the body of the spark plug. I call it the body, you know. You're going to hook a cable up to a positive side of the battery. Then you're going to hook it up to the positive side of the coil from the battery, okay? You're going to take a spark plug wire or, you know, coil wire, whatever you want to do, and hook it up to there. It goes down and hooks to the spark plug, okay? Then you have a clip 
bear with me, it's not that bad. And you clip it onto the negative side or number one on the German one. We'll do that in a second. And you'll see what I do with that, okay, to test for spark. Now, remember, it's not that hard. Negative side there to ground the spark plug. Positive side there to the positive side of the coil. That, of course, goes to your spark plug. And this wire that we're going to test for spark goes to the negative side of the coil. So I'm going to turn the light out so we can check it. Now, all you're going to do here is take this lead that you have to the negative post. See the spark? Let me get you down over here. Okay, now take a look down at the spark plug itself and see if you have spark in it. See the spark? I know it's hard to see. You see it down there? Not the one here, the one at the spark plug. There you go. Okay, that coil has spark. Let's test one of the German ones uh, from Bosch. And I know it's a little dark. Give me a second. I'm keeping the light out so you can see what's going on with the spark. Okay, remember now number 15 is the positive one on your Bosch. Okay. Make sure it's hooked on right. There we go. And number one is the negative side. Okay. And let's go back to check them for spark. Okay. And we have spark. There's our spark. Now check down at the spark plug. I'm trying to get it to where you can see it. Look down at here. <laughs> see it? You can see it if you... Okay. Just look right down in there. There's a spark. I'm hoping it's showing up on film, but you get the point. Let's check one more. I'm curious to see what this little fat boy's doing here. Uh, 15's on the right for the positive. I never film in the dark. It's kind of weird. Okay. And because we had a problem with that one with the secondary winding. Okay, and we have spark at the plug. Hmm. I don't know. But that's how you test it. Okay, so that is how you test an ignition coil for primary winding problems, secondary winding, resistance, like a short, you know, in the body of it inside, I believe is what they're referring to, and also for spark. So that is how you run a test on them. Like I said, if some of them get hot, they can break down. But that's a, a way of at least bench testing and see if you got something that's functioning. Like I said, that short fat boy, the Bosch one, that's how I refer to it. It seems like there are some problems with the secondary wiring. So that's, that's at least what I'm getting at out of it. But the point being now, the larger one was fine. Uh, the Beirut German, the brand new one was spot on. It's great. Uh, on some of the Volkswagen ones, I believe it was with the Petronics in your distributor. They like to have three ohms from what I recall. Okay. So do your homework on it, but that's at least how you can test them. You can test all coils that way, not just German Volkswagen Bosch. You, that's how you test all coils, the style of coil, the older style. Okay, so just do your math and find the information out on what the resistance should be on yours. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, Friday afternoon, I will release the yearly Christmas video and Heather and I will do a house tour. Basically, Heather will <laughs> of the Christmas decorations and wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. Uh, I may pop on Friday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern time uh, on the 23rd. 
and do a live chat for maybe one hour. I think Heather might be on her with me just to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. So I'll put it up in the community tab, Facebook group, and so on and so on. So I hope everybody has a really, really great day.